So how many ways do you know how to write a function in JavaScript? One, two, three maybe? Well, JavaScript can be a bit of a crazy programming language sometimes and functions are no exception. There are quite a few different ways that you can write a function in JavaScript, each with their own pros and cons. But before I show you the various ways, there's one important concept that you need to understand in JavaScript, and that is the this keyword. So you may have come across the this keyword in JavaScript code before, and it basically refers to an object, but the value of this can change inside a function depending on how the function was called. You can think of this as a kind of hidden function variable, and you're going to see as we look at the different ways of writing functions, how the value of this can change depending on how you write and use your functions. So with this in mind, let's take a look at the first way that you can write a function in JavaScript. The first approach that we're going to look at is probably the way new JavaScript developers are introduced to functions, and that is to use a function declaration. A function declaration is written simply by using the function keyword, then the name of the function, and then any parameters that the function is going to be accepting, followed by some curly braces. If you were to log out the value of this inside of a function declaration, it will give you the global object, which if you're running inside the browser will essentially be the window object. The interesting thing about function declarations is they're actually hoisted to the top of the scope of where you define them, so you can actually use the function itself before it's been defined. So this might be handy if you want to keep all of your functions at the bottom of your code and group them all together. This is in contrast to the next method that we're going to look at which doesn't hoist your functions. Function expressions look very similar to function declarations, but you assign it to a variable which can then be used later on. This is an example of a named function expression. Another slight variation of this is where you don't give the function a name and you create an anonymous function. As with function declarations, the value of this will be the global object that's available to you from whatever environment you're running in, and the difference between expressions and declarations is mainly that the expression does not get hoisted to the top of the scope of where you define it. Another way of working with function expressions is to assign them to properties in objects. So this gives you a nice convenient way of grouping functions together and also attaching them to other data that's stored within that object. But there's one difference to using function expressions on an object and that's all down to the value of this. So in our previous examples, this has been set to the global object, the window object for example. But within an object itself, if you have a function, the value of this is actually set to the value of the object itself. This is all to do with the way that this inherits its value from where it's called from. So for example, if we call the add and subtract functions on the MyMath object, the value of this is actually going to be set to the MyMath object inside of those functions rather than the global window object. There's another way to write functions which has a totally opposite effect when working with objects, which we'll look at in a moment, but first, what happens if you give your function expression a name? So it might seem a bit weird to give a function expression a name on an object because we could just use the object's property to call that function. But if we do leave it as an anonymous function on the object property, then there's actually no way to call it inside itself. We can, however, give the function expression a name and that allows the function to call itself which is really useful for recursive functions that need to call themselves. If you're thinking, can't we just call this.getFactorial inside of the anonymous function to call itself? Well, if you're thinking that, then you're absolutely correct and you're really getting the hang of the this concept. I'm very proud of you. So another way to write the getFactorial function on the MyMath object would be to rewrite it using the this keyword. This might save you a few characters when writing your functions because you don't need to give that function a name anymore. And something else that might save you a few more keystrokes is to use shorthand functions. So shorthand functions were introduced in ES6 a few years ago and they allow you to write a function on an object 
just using the function name and any parameters that it requires. So you might be able to see from this example that the this keyword works in exactly the same way before and it gives us the user object to work with so we can access the different properties on the object. Another example of using shorthand functions is when you are using a class within JavaScript. Classes were also introduced in ES6 and they give you a way to provide a blueprint for any objects that you can create from them using the new keyword. For example, this is what a user class might look like and it has two shorthand functions for get full name and also a special constructor function. The constructor function is called when a new object is created from this class and is effectively used to set up data for the object that's being created and in this case, that this keyword will refer to the new object that's being created. It's worth noting that a class is very similar to a function declaration that is used to create new objects with the new keyword, so the following code does pretty much the same thing. So if you think you've got your head around the way that this keyword works in JavaScript, prepare to have your mind blown because this last way of writing functions in JavaScript completely changes the way this works. Another feature that was introduced in ES6, arrow functions scared the heck out of me when I first saw them because I was used to writing function declarations and function expressions as we've already seen. You've probably seen arrow functions already before and at first glance they look completely cryptic. Where did the function keyword, the curly braces, the parentheses and the return statement go? So arrow functions were introduced to be a compact version of function expressions but they can be a bit confusing at first glance. So this arrow function is equivalent to this function expression. So there are a few things to bear in mind when writing arrow functions. The first is you can miss out the parentheses around the parameters when defining the function, but if there's more than one, you do need to have parentheses around the multiple parameters that you're defining. The other thing is you can miss out the curly braces and the return statement if you've just got one line of code, but if you have more than that, you do need to have the curly braces and some kind of return statement in there. And the final thing is the way that this works is completely different. It's subject to something called lexical scoping. So what the heck is lexical scoping? Well, it just means the rules that we've looked at for how this gets its value in previous ways to write functions doesn't really apply with arrow functions. In an arrow function, the value of this gets the value from where it was defined rather than where it was called from. If you take the following object with these two functions, one with an arrow function and one with a function expression, running the code you will notice that the value logged to the console is different. The function expression will log the MyMath objects to the console, but the arrow function will log something different and it's most likely it will log the global object if you've run it directly from the console. This lexical scoping is useful in some situations, but it is just something to be aware of. So now you know lots of different ways to write functions in JavaScript, but which one should you be using? Well, I hate to be that person that says it depends, but it does really depend on what type of function you're writing and as we've seen, where you're defining it and where it's going to be used. However, this is how I would choose a function writing approach in JavaScript. Try and write JavaScript classes and use constructor and shorthand functions to group related bits of data together so that you've got objects that have a specific meaning. Use function expressions with the function keyword on object properties so that you can refer to the this value to actually refer to the same object that you're working with. Avoid using function declarations because although the hoisting might seem pretty cool, it can lead to really unreadable code and it makes it more difficult to track down problems later on. And always go for an arrow function if you're writing something short. They're compact, readable if you understand the syntax and you can make use of that lexical this if it makes sense to do so. So that lexical scoping can be quite useful in some situations but it may present you some problems if you don't fully understand how it's working and you may need to bind the value of this to a particular function and if you've got no idea what the bind function does then you should check out this next video where I go through the bind, call and apply functions in JavaScript and how they affect the values of this.